Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. If it's your first time stopping by, feel free to subscribe down below if you like this kind of content. And if you're a returning subscriber, you already know you're a real one. In my first faith based QA, I mentioned I once seen someone from committing suicide and someone asked for the story time. So here it is. Go and grab your snacks, your popcorn, and get cozy because I'm about to dive in. So the story begins on the 6th of April 2018. I was in my third year of uni and I used to stay close to a couple of my friends. So we normally hang out together in each other's houses, sometimes stay till midnight because we all stayed close by. We were all chilling in one of their flats and this is like past 11 p.m. and someone randomly from nowhere suggests, oh, we should go out for a walk. And we're just there thinking, hmm, that's a good idea, we should go out for a walk. Mind you, we had never done this before. I mean, it's so random. First of all, this is like almost midnight. It's literally 11 p.m. And why do we want to go out for a walk? Almost nowhere is open. So what is the purpose of this walk? And why do we need to go out for a walk? It didn't make sense to me either, but we all somehow agreed and we decided to go out for this walk. We were walking now around the neighborhood. And at the time I had been in that apartment for about two to three years, but the places we walked through are places I had never been before. We were just walking in the sea, like wanderers, like sheep without a shepherd, just walking, walking around, you know, as if that was not enough. One of us suggested, Hmm, we should probably go to the grocery store to grab a couple items. And we all said, wow, great idea. Let's go. There was a grocery store next to us that was open for 24 hours. Mind you now, this is almost 12 midnight. I don't think we needed anything urgent from the grocery store. But hey ho, we still go to the grocery store. Now we're going to the grocery store, of course it's midnight so almost no one is there. The grocery store was about 7 to 10 minutes walk away from where we stayed. So it wasn't too far. So we're on our way back now. And suddenly two of my friends decided to have a race competition for no reason again. Mind you, this is still like... 12 midnight i mean okay so we're there just watching them and they're running through and there is this bar or it's a pub not too far from our place and a few people were gathered there there were people who were a bit drunk some people tipsy just some people staggering back home so they're walking on the right side of the street and we're on the left side of the street now and my friends are running and just screaming so we're trying to be funny and we're just screaming we don't know these people we don't know these people we're not with them and the people on the right side of the street turned to look at us but i'm guessing they were drunk so they probably didn't even know what's going on anyway we keep walking and we're literally like a minute away from our place and this drunk guy from nowhere walks up to us of course we can see he's drunk so we're trying to be as polite as possible and trying to help him he says hi and we say hi how are you doing he says oh nothing just coming back from the pub and on his way home we're like oh okay like i hope you're well like um do you need help with anything and he's like no he's just trying to get home and then from nowhere he starts speaking about suicide he said yeah um you know life can get very tough sometimes you know but we shouldn't think of committing suicide at this point i'm like in shock like of course we know he's drunk clearly but the fact that is what he's saying that's just so random and he's just saying yeah he knew a few people who have been through a lot lately and have committed suicide but the way he was speaking he sounded like he was speaking about himself and what he was going through i could sense that from his voice and we're just trying to encourage him and at this point we had recently lost a classmate to suicide so we kind of felt the gravity of what he was saying and we knew it was serious because this is how it kind of starts people speak about suicide sometimes say it as a joke or throw it around until it actually happened so i knew to take it a bit more seriously than it sounded so we're just encouraging him now and just speaking with him and then we start preaching the gospel to him and we asked if he knew about jesus he said yeah he's heard about jesus before and we asked does he believe in god and he said not really but then he told us the story of one time he encountered this christians that told him stuff about his life and he was shocked that they knew all that of course the spirit of god revealed that to those christians so they could reach him but then he still didn't have enough faith in god we asked what he did and he said he worked offshore so he was quite comfortable and well to do now it's like maybe half 12 am and this is now saturday morning so i 
take his number and we invite him to church and then he said he's had a few experiences like this before people have invited him to church but then when he got into church people judged him for the way he looked but people didn't accept him and i said oh no we don't do that in my church and i'll be sure to receive him at the door all he has to do is give me a call or a text when he gets there and i'll come out and take him in so he says okay and he agrees saturday i go by my day i think i sent him a message to remind him in the evening i'll see him in church on sunday sunday comes now and he does not turn up to church i didn't give it too much thought i just thought maybe he changed his mind and i was thinking of calling or texting him later in the week to check up on him and i go to me now with a friend of mine because we have a coursework due the following day so we're working for me trying to get this coursework done before monday and then i receive a call from him i was thinking oh it's nice he called me maybe he's trying to explain why he didn't go to church and i received the call and he said can i come and meet him right now i remember him saying this and i feel so bad for my response and I said, um, I could meet you, but I have a coursework due on Monday and I'm trying to get that done. I was so young and so naive. Now I would have said something different. I said, but I could meet you on Monday. We could meet in a cafe or somewhere. He said, oh, he would like us to meet today. And I'm thinking, okay, I would try and finish my coursework as soon as possible and meet you. Ask me why he was crying on the call. Like my heart broke when I heard that. I was so confused. I asked him, like, I hope you're doing okay. Um, what's up? Why are you crying? I'm also thinking, like, I'm a stranger. You met me less than 48 hours ago and you're calling me today and you're crying on the call. Like, I was confused. And he said he was tired of life. It's just the law. He can't deal with this. It's just a law for him to bear and it's just too much. And I'm just like, calm down, please calm down. What is it? I can help you. Where are you? And he said he's in the woods. I'm like, what are you doing in the woods, sir? Why are you in the woods? And he said he's about to hang himself. When he said this, my brain couldn't process it. I was so confused because I thought we we're having a normal conversation before this and we were trying to establish how to meet, where to meet and how I could help him. I'm like, what's going on? And he says, yeah, he's got a rope here with him. And he was explaining the process to me of how he plans to commit suicide. I was so confused. I'm like, please don't do that to yourself. I really said I'm going to meet you. Just hold on. Just wait a couple minutes. I'm coming to meet you. At this point now, I know it's a matter of life and death. I'm willing to throw my coursework and leave that aside and run to meet this guy. I ask him, where are you? What is your location? And he refuses to tell me. I'm thinking, dang. I can't even save him. I can't call the police. If I call the police, where would I say he is? I, I don't even know where he is, so I can't even do anything. I give the phone to my friend who is next to me to speak with him because I'm very confused and I couldn't handle the situation by myself. And we're both speaking with him and asking, what are you doing? Trying to encourage him now and trying to have him hang him there on the call because we couldn't lose him. He would speak, we would listen, we would speak back and convince him he would agree and then go quiet on the call. And we're confused like what's going on? Like what's he doing? Is he trying to kill himself? Because we can't see him and we don't know what's going on now. We're asking, please give us your location because we need to send help to you as soon as possible. We want to help you. And he said no, no, because I think he really wanted to die. So he wasn't willing to let us save him. And then I remember this. He caught the call on us, guys. He caught the call. So I'm thinking all the worst in my head right now. I'm just thinking, God, this man cannot die. This man cannot kill himself. I will not be able to live with myself if this man kills himself. How do we help him? Holy Spirit, please help me. Please, what do I do? We keep calling him. Now he's not answering. So my panic level is just rising, rising, rising. I can't even call the police once again because I don't know where he is. So what am I telling the police? So we try calling him again and he finally answers. Oh, I'm so glad he answered. And at this point, his heart is a bit softened. So he's listening to us now and he actually is cooperating with us. And now he gives us his location and he's at least an hour away from us. So there's no way getting to him anytime soon. So my friend uses a phone to call the police whilst I'm still on the phone with him. So he doesn't do anything stupid. And I'm trying to speak with him and encourage him and tell him all the reasons why he shouldn't kill himself and all the reasons why he should leave. And suddenly I hear voices in the background and I'm like, are there people coming towards you? And he said, yes. 
and I'm like, oh, that's great. Please, could you give them the phone? I think he was a bit reluctant, but then he gave them the phone eventually. And we speak to them now. And we explain the whole situation to them. We tell them, this man is about to kill himself. Please do not leave his sight. We have just called the police location. Please, if you can stay next to him until the police arrives, because we cannot get there right now and we need him to be alive. The people were so kind and stayed with him until the police arrived. And then the police came and I honestly don't know what happened after then because we couldn't reach him via his phone. A few days or weeks pass now and I still keep remembering the incident and I'm thinking god I hope he's okay and I hope he's safe and doing well I think I tried reaching him he probably didn't respond so I kept thinking I hope he's not mad at all because I wasn't sure how the whole thing ended and how it went with him and the police and him in general and how he is now and then a couple weeks passed by months even i think and i was on my way back home from uni this random evening and my phone is ringing i pick up my phone and he's the one calling i'm just so happy like i answer the call with a big smile on my face he's just so happy he's telling me sorry he never called back to say thank you he just wants to say thank you for what happened the other day for how we saved his life he was saying i don't know what that means to him and just telling me what the updates in his life has been he said he got promotion at his job and he was doing way better now he felt way happier now and he's in a better place i'm just like wow like look at what god did how did he go from wanting to commit suicide to getting a promotion at his job and being in a better place today we got to connect he also asked how i was doing so i just gave him a few updates in my life and he encouraged me as well it was just so nice knowing he was doing better now he still wasn't open to receiving christ at the moment which i completely understood so i just like said a prayer for him and just encouraged him a few months after this i still keep in touch with him and keep sending messages to invite him to church in hopes he would accept my invitation someday i even did message him sometime this year and he's doing well so that is good to know i think the moral of this story is the saving power of the word of god if i remember correctly he did mention he received this peace when he spoke with us and i still keep wondering why he chose to call us of all people when he was in that situation that was a very very vulnerable moment for him and he had family he had friends he had probably colleagues but he chose to call me a stranger he met 24 hours ago i mean it's crazy and i feel that shows the evidence of the power and the spirit of god i imagine if we never spoke the gospel to him or if we never even stopped to say hi to him if he would still be alive today but i just want to thank god he is alive and he's doing well and i want to use the story to encourage you guys as well to preach the gospel of god wherever you go because it literally saves lives and it saves someone's life in this story as you can see so let's keep preaching the gospel of god some people may accept the gospel and give their lives some may not but it's still changing their lives and we're still planting seeds in this heart so let's be encouraged to take the gospel of God with us everywhere we go because we don't know who needs it and we don't know whose life it might save. Yes guys, that is the story. Pretty dramatic, but I thank God for how it ended. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave a comment down below if you want more story times. And I'll be sure to dig up in my bank of stories. Do not forget to subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye! This smile today, you don't want to know the process behind this smile. This is a message for someone. I don't know who this is for. If you want to get your smile back and your joy in life back, get back with God because he would fill you with so much joy your heart cannot contain that it just radiates through your face. God is good. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. God is good. Bye!